Welcome back to Mission Control in Houston and the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center, where at this hour the Orbit 3 team of flight controllers is on duty. And we are just minutes away from the arrival of a new resupply ship to the International Space Station. Here in Houston, this team of flight controllers led by Flight Director Greg Whitney, working in concert with the flight control team half a world away at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov outside Moscow, in charge tonight of the approach and soon docking of the ISS Progress 52 cargo ship that launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan just five hours ago and now is in the final minutes of an expedited six-hour rendezvous to link up to the pier's docking compartment. On board the International Space Station at this hour, the Expedition 36 crew, the six crew members comprising uh, the station residents from left to right, uh, Russian flight engineer Alexander Mazurkin, Station Commander Pavel Vinogradov, NASA flight engineer Chris Cassidy, European Space Agency flight engineer Luca Parmitano, Russian flight engineer Fyodor Yurchikin and NASA flight engineer Karen Nyberg are up and around. They uh, took a midday nap earlier today and were awakened just in time uh, to watch an uplink of the launch uh, sent to them by flight controllers here in Houston. The launch occurring at 3.45 p.m. Central Time, 2.45 a.m. Baikonur Time on Sunday morning. The Soyuz booster carrying the Progress 52 cargo ship lifted off on time, climbed into the early morning sky over the Baikonur Cosmodrome on the central desert of uh, Kazakhstan, arced out uh, to the northeast, and and uh, flew a flawless nine-minute uh, uh, flight profile to its uh, preliminary orbit, separating from its third stage, and then minutes later, deploying its solar arrays and all of its navigational antennas on time and in good shape. In the uh, five hours or so uh, that have ensued since uh, the uh, launch of the Progress 52 cargo ship, uh, a number of rendezvous maneuvers, engine firings by the Progress resupply craft have taken place to put the Progress on a pinpoint path for a link up to the pier's docking compartment just 39 minutes from now. The International Space Station is currently orbiting 260 miles above the Earth, traveling from north Northwest to southeast over the Indonesian island chain uh, in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. At the moment, uh, the progress uh, steadily closing in for its uh, station keeping period uh, has uh, closed to within six kilometers of the International Space Station, uh, closing at a rate of about uh, 12 meters per second. That rate will uh, begin to slow down considerably as uh, the progress uh, arrives in the neighborhood of the International Space Station, moving into a short period of station keeping that will occur after a quick fly around to precisely align its forward docking probe to the docking port on the pier's docking compartment on the Earth-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. That uh, pier's docking port was vacated on Thursday with the departure of the previous Progress resupply ship, the ISS Progress 50 craft, that undocked on Thursday afternoon and was sent into a fiery descent to burn up over the Pacific Ocean, loaded with trash. So the pier's docking port now vacant, uh, ready to accept the 52 Progress craft that is located that is uh, loaded with 1212 pounds of propellant 42 pounds of oxygen 62 pounds of air 926 pounds of water and 3395 pounds of dry cargo including maintenance equipment resupply items life support system items and experiment equipment for the Expedition 36 crew. Amongst uh, the late stowage items uh, that were uh, flown down to Baikonur, a series of uh, tools uh, for spacewalking repairs to the U.S. spacesuits, in particular the spacesuit worn, worn by L Luca Parmitano uh, back on July 16th when he and Chris Cassidy ventured outside for the second of two spacewalks in as many weeks. Uh, Parmitano's helmet um, uh, began to fill up with water. The spacewalk was terminated early after just an hour and 32 minutes, and uh, troubleshooting has been ongoing for the past uh, week and a half or so uh, to try to pinpoint the cause of the water intrusion into Parmitano's helmet. Some of the tools that are being flown up on the progress uh, for an arrival shortly at the International Space Station uh, will help, uh, along with some spare parts, uh, as soon as a specific uh, culprit is 
identified for uh, the occurrence uh, that took place back on July 16th when the water intrusion into Parmitano's helmet cut short the second of the two spacewalks that he and Chris Cassidy were conducting. Once the uh, Progress uh, docks to the International Space Station's Piers docking compartment, there will be a period of a couple of minutes to allow the relative motion of both vehicles to dampen out. Uh, that will enable a uh, retraction of the forward docking probe on the Progress to bring the two uh, docking surfaces uh, tightly together and to allow hooks to close on both sides of the docking interface to form a hard mate. Uh, the uh, Russian crew members on board the station, uh, Vinogradov, Yurchikin, and Mazurkin, will not uh, open the hatch to the Progress this evening. They'll wait until Sunday afternoon to open the hatch to begin unloading the almost three tons of cargo uh, that the Progress is carrying to the International Laboratory. Everything has gone flawlessly so far in the flight of the Progress to the International Space Station. No technical issues uh, have been worked whatsoever. Uh, every one of the uh, rendezvous burns has been executed in uh, flawless fashion, and uh, all of the Progress systems are in excellent shape as it approaches the four-kilometer distance mark away from the International Space Station, now closing at a rate of about 11 meters per second. Four kilometers just went through a four kilometer mark. Mm -hmm. 11 even meters per second range rate. Copy. What's the quality of uh, video image on VACO? It's still unstable. Unstable. Very. Copy. The docking uh, of the Progress to the Piers docking compartment is scheduled at 9.26 p.m. Central Time, uh, just about uh, 34 minutes from now. Uh, assuming an on-time docking, uh, the link-up will occur over the uh, South Pacific, uh, west of the uh, western coast of South America, as uh, the space station and the Progress will be flying from southwest to northeast in its orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. I'm sorry, what did you say about Tor? At three kilometer mark on MCC go, you will need to activate Toro from the laptop. Three kilometers, 300 meters right now. Once we reach three kilometer mark, I'll let you know. A good view from external cameras on the International Space Station as uh, the orbital outpost uh, flies uh, 260 miles off the northwest coast of Australia moving from northwest to southeast. Three kilometers. Three kilometers. The activation uh, for, of the TORU system that you heard a moment ago in that uh, translated exchange between Russian flight controllers and Korolyov and the crew on board the station refers to the acronym for the telerobotically operated system. That is the manual joystick at a workstation in the Zvezda service module that would be uh, employed in the highly unlikely event a failure of the core's automated rendezvous system would occur between now and the time of docking. Uh, all of the uh, core's systems uh, were checked out a short time ago uh, in both uh, prime and backup mode. Uh, they're operating uh, in good shape. No issues associated with the uh, approach of the progress for its docking just over a half an hour from now. The display is very jittery, but we see that maneuver is ongoing. Copy. And we're experiencing problems with end viewer. We need to probably close this. There's really nothing else we can do. Okay, uh, let us try to start recording again. Question about uh, symbol and VACO image quality. Uh, it's not very good. It's unstable, very jittery. And actually, 
And viewer is back on, so they're just restarted. Uh, the recording is ongoing, but once again, like I said, the video image quality is very poor, very jittery. That is uh, Fyodor Yurchikin on board uh, the International Space Station uh, reporting back to Russian flight controllers uh, that the uh, video image on his monitor at the workstation in the Zvezda service module, not the best of quality at the moment. Uh, the flight controllers expecting that to lock up uh, with a better quality image a short time from now. And work. Toro. On command has been sent. I received a message that Toru is on. And that uh, call from the Russian flight controllers up to the station uh, reporting that the telerobotic op operated uh, rendezvous system, the backup system, the manual joystick system that would be used uh, by the Russian flight engineers in these Vezda service module if they had to manually fly the progress in for a docking. That command link has been established with the progress, although uh, it is currently flying in automated fashion in good shape on the CORE's automated rendezvous system. The arrival of uh, Progress 52 for its soon to uh, be achieved docking to the pier's docking compartment will re-up uh, the number of Russian vehicles at the station to three. There are two Soyuz vehicles uh, currently at the station. One of them uh, in the field of view uh, is the yeah. Soyuz TMA-09M spacecraft uh, that is mated uh, to the uh, Rosviet module on the Earth-facing side of the uh, Russian segment of the International Space Station. Uh, the other uh, Soyuz vehicle, uh, the Soyuz TMA-08M uh, vehicle that arrived back in late March, is docked to the Poisk module on the space-facing side of the International Space Station's Russian segment. The uh, European Space Agency's all four indicators. Automated transfer vehicle is docked uh, to the aft port of the Zvezda service module and will remain there until late October. The progress uh, that is approaching the station for a docking just 29 minutes from now uh, should remain at the station under current planning until December. Select BPS control panel for BPS. Copy. And that's complete. All four indicators are in good state. Going to page 22, and we're still getting a very unstable signal. Extremely unstable. Display uh, freezes up for about five to six uh, seconds. We are about eight and a half minutes away from the point at which uh, the progress will begin uh, what is known as its fly-around mode, uh, basically uh, maneuvering to a point about 150 meters uh, directly uh, in line with and uh, in back of the pier's docking compartment uh, docking port. Uh, that will initiate a period of a couple of minutes or so of station keeping to enable Russian flight controllers to assess the precise alignment of the forward docking probe on the progress with the docking port on piers itself. Once they're happy with that, the time-tagged uh, commands for the automated reapproach uh, will uh, enable the progress to begin its final approach. That's expected at about 9.16 central time. This is Fyodor. I can be reporting on those. You don't need to worry about it. Eleven hundred meters, three and a half meters per second. Range rate. Copy. We're breaking. Uh, Depo is on. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston. If you look carefully at about the 10 o'clock position on this view from external cameras on the station, you can see uh, the Progress 52 cargo ship uh, 
a dot against uh, the uh, clouds now coming into view over uh, the blue ocean of the South Pacific. We have a visual on the progress the vehicle from uh, the uh, starboard crew quarter window. Copy. Just a few hours ago, uh, the Progress was perched atop its Soyuz booster on the launch pad of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Just four minutes before launch, the International Space Station flew directly over Baikonur. And at the time of launch, the space station was flying 260 statute miles over southern Russia near the Kazakh-Mongolian border. Now, a little more than uh, five hours later, we have a good visual on the station. Progress is uh, less than a kilometer away, about 780 meters away from its docking uh, to the pier's docking compartment to complete uh, yet another fast track expedited rendezvous to deliver almost three tons of food, fuel, and supplies to the International Space Station. We've gone out of range uh, of a downlink video capability from the International Space Station as we switch uh, satellites uh, on the tracking and data relay satellite system. We should be reacquiring a TV capability in about uh, 10 minutes. Meanwhile, uh, reports uh, continue to come in of on-time engine firings, uh, short impulses, uh, very minor mid-course correction burns, executed by the onboard computers on the Progress resupply craft. 530 meters range, one decimal 57 range rate. Just 500 meters now separating the Progress from its destination at the International Space Station, closing at a rate of about uh, one and a half meters per second. At the time of contact and capture, the actual docking itself, the uh, progress will be uh, approaching at a glacial rate of about one-tenth of a meter per second. 500 meters. Talking at the same time. And, uh, Pavel, we lost KU. Yeah, our video image is extremely unstable, very jittery. Understood. 460, 1.5 meters per second. Mm -hmm. Copy. Sasha, are you seeing it? So we have a good visual on it from the uh, starboard crew quarter window. I uh, wanted to say a port, but I got confused. Where is w which? Okay, could you tell us uh, one more time about the quality of the video image? It hasn't recovered yet, but uh, we're still at 405 uh, meters right now. Copy. Three hundred eighty. One point twenty four. Okay, Pavel. Uh, 
Yuri, uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, I'm here. We will work with TV system from the tour uh, control panel. So please bring BPS to initial. BPS is. That's done. Turn on operation. Yes, Done. Turn off TV. Yes, TV is off. Turn on TV. Yes, TV on. The uh, visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control uh, reports uh, that the progress has initiated its fly around of the International Space Station on the right, uh, Heidi Poppelreiter, who is uh, talking uh, with Tom Erkenswick, another visiting vehicle officer who is stationed uh, this evening at the Russian Mission Control Team in Korolyov. Okay, we have the uh, display back, but it's uh, cut in half. Okay, we're waiting for 20 seconds still. It's been 20 seconds. Russian uh, cosmonauts on board the station reporting uh, some subpar quality television on their monitors in the Zvezda service module, which uh, would come into play in the event uh, the core's automated rendezvous system uh, would uh, fail for some reason. However, it is uh, holding steady. Uh, it is in good shape. Uh, the automated approach of the Progress uh, now has carried it okay. to a distance of just 280 meters from its final destination at the docking port on the pier's docking compartment. In about 10 seconds for MET-44. What do you have that? Copy. Okay, I just uh, reselected for MET-44 and there's no change. Copy. Zero point three five meters per second uh, range rate. Range was inaudible, talking at the same time. Turn on operation. Operation on. Two hundred fifty meters. Range rate is zero decimal thirty seven meters per second. Copy. Progress uh, continuing its fly around uh, to precisely align its forward docking probe with um, the docking port on the pier's docking compartment. Uh, the core's automated rendezvous system functioning normally on both its uh, A and B sets, two redundant sets of core's systems. Progress uh, will uh, put on the brakes at about 170 meters or so for a period of a few minutes of station keeping, allowing one final check of all of uh, its systems by Russian flight controllers uh, in the uh, cavernous room you're looking at right now, the Russian flight control room in Korolyov outside Moscow. TV is off. And then turn them back on. That's done. It's on. What's the image quality? Station, Moscow. Moscow Station. Go ahead. Yuri, turn on TV. That's done. What next? And that's it for now? Uh, what is the image quality now? Uh, we don't have any. 
I turned on TV and that wasn't. We don't even see the crosshairs. Do I need to turn on TV display, perhaps? Moscow Station. How do you read station? Turn on inaudible. Six. That's on. Okay, we're watching the image now. We got the image back from Progress. What about the quality of the image? It's uh, tolerable. We see the docking port. Uh, there are some interferences. 2.5 degrees uh, below the center, pitch wise. Copy. And uh, the v visiting vehicle officers here in Mission Control and Korolev confirm that the fly around is now complete. And uh, the Progress 52 cargo craft is uh, initiated its station keeping at a range of uh, just under 200 meters from the pier's docking compartment. This is expected uh, to last uh, just a couple of minutes or so. One final opportunity for Russian flight controllers to assess the alignment of the forward docking probe on progress with the pier's docking port before the uh, commands are issued uh, to reinitiate final approach. Yuri, should we restore the uh, formats and so on and so forth? Uh, no, not right now. Copy. Because there is a contradiction between TV display and the other thing. Uh, 200 meters, range rate zero. We should be reacquiring a uh, television downlink capability from the station through the tracking and data relay satellite system momentarily to provide us uh, any views of the progress from external cameras on the international outpost. I have uh, And there is another uh, option to enable a final approach using and now a good view of the uh, Progress 52 cargo ship, the unpiloted craft that launched uh, just five and a half hours ago from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, moved into the fast lane on the highway to the International Space Station, and now uh, is sitting passively about 190 meters or so away from the pier's docking compartment, docking port, with uh, the resumption of final approach for contact and capture expected uh, just minutes from now. But uh, the sun is shining from the side, but I do see uh, the station, and uh, um, it's about a degree off in the pitch. And, uh, yeah. Okay, you will need to enable final approach, so for that you will need to uh, set BPS to initial. Right, so turn on BPS to initial. Okay, BPS initial set. Activate operation. Operation on. Select uh, format 44. Once again, what? Format 44. Okay, format 44 being selected. I see. We're accelerating. 197 meters, 0 decimal 17. Range rate. Copy. Actually, can you switch AGC mode to uh, have a better visual on the uh, target? 072. 083. 
And final approach has been initiated on automated command. The uh, Progress 52 on the final la leg of its uh, five and a half hour journey from launch pad to the International Space Station. About to cross into an orbital sunset now over the uh, South Pacific Ocean, soon to begin a southwest to north a northeasterly track that will carry uh, the progress to its link up with docking scheduled about 11 minutes from now. And the electronic crosshairs are uh, shifted and the display is cut in half. And right now we're about one degree off the center of the electronic crosshairs uh, in pitch and practically zero. Uh, yeah, yeah. 135 uh, meters range, 0 decimal 72 meters per second range rate, and uh, it's breaking, slowing down. Do you hear me, guys? Yes, hello, Mr. Solovia. Yes, yeah, so we're doing well uh, for both range and range rate, uh, but do you actually see anything on, from TV? Do you have any image? I mean, that's the most important thing. Yeah, no, it's okay. We also have a bunch of windows that we can use. It's moving very smoothly. It's great that you have windows, and it's great that you can look out them. I was talking about having TV. Well, right now, we keep losing the picture. 100 meters, 0 decimal 5 meters per second. At least here on the ground, we're getting good TV. Uh, the uh, Russian uh, cosmonauts in the Zvezda service module are looking uh, at an image being relayed from the Progress's external cameras through uh, an MPEG uh, setup in the Russian segment of the International Space Station. The progress is doing just fine, thank you, uh, just 87 meters away from uh, its docking to the pier's docking compartment, moving in at a rate of about four-tenths of a meter per second. Everything is in excellent shape on the unpiloted craft. 83 meters. That conversation uh, you just heard uh, uh, between uh, Fyodor Yurchikin and uh, Pavel Vinogradov was with Vladimir Soloviev, the chief Russian flight director from his console, uh, in the uh, cavernous flight control room at the Russian Mission Control Center in Korolyov, just outside of Moscow. Great view of the progress. Sasha, so you don't have TV image. The core's uh, antenna will be retracting shortly. It comes through, but it, we keep losing it. So All of the appendages uh, deployed uh, in perfect fashion uh, following uh, its uh, separation from the third stage of the Soyuz booster about nine minutes after launch uh, from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, just over five and a half hours ago. It's weird because we checked it on orbit two and it was all good. A few hours back. Yeah, 63 meters. Zero decimal, uh, 24 meters per second range rate. You know, guys, back in my time, at the dawn of uh, the ISS program, and uh, we had a the image uh, from a foggy camera, and so the guys were looking out all windows, telling each other what they see, comparing notes. Yes, I know, that's what I'm using. I'm using the lower window to watch out uh, the window. Yeah, Vladimir Alexeyevich, that's what uh, we're doing. So I have Fyodor and Sasha looking out different windows, telling me what they see. 54 meters, zero decimal, 17 meters per second. 
All three Russian cosmonauts uh, in play uh, with the monitoring of the approach of the Progress 52 cargo craft. Deck and, uh, Just 45 meters uh, away from its final destination at the pier's docking compartment. No, and Vesca, we're all good for the nomenclature. Pavel. Yes, go ahead. On page 23, at 30 meters, you will need to set BBS to initial and uh, do not activate operation. Yuri, I'm sorry, pull BBS to initial. Yes, at 30 meters. Not yet. Okay, so what? 40 meters, 45 meters. Zero decimal 16 range rate. Play over by us to initial and operation, right? No, but by us to initial, then operation. Inaudible enabled. Copy. So far, so good uh, for the Progress 52 on its automated approach for docking to the pier's docking compartment of the International Space Station. Thirty-two meters. Zero decimal sixteen uh, meters per second range rate. Copy. Sending command to BPS initial. Copy. Yes, and then operation is set. All four LEDs are on. The video image is recovering a little bit. Copy. The progress uh, moving into an orbital sunset over the southeastern Pacific Ocean. Soon to approach uh, the west coast of South America. We'll be flying directly over Ecuador. We're about four minutes away from docking. Some 20 meters separating the progress from the pier's docking compartment. I have a visual on the target. The target is to the left, half a degree to the left of the uh, electronic uh, crosshairs and half a degree in pitch. 25 meters, 0 decimal, 12 meters per second range rate. Can you see it? Yes. The crosshairs are uh, aligned. Should we do the back out uh, on plus X axis? Why? Why would you want to do that? Yes. Just enable. Just enable it. Okay, and we just lost the image again. Okay, and Pavel, we're watching telemetry and the process is going well. So even if you don't see it, it doesn't mean it's not going well. Right, so all the crosshairs are at zero. The target is... This is the view, uh, albeit a bit shaky, from uh, the camera on the uh, progress the vehicle. Crosshairs. Just about nine meters away. Zero point. You can see the... Um, uh, the crosshaired uh, docking target just underneath the docking port itself to the pier's docking compartment, which also serves uh, as an airlock for Russian-based spacewalks. And that'll be the airlock from which uh, Fyodor Yurchikin and Alexander Mazurkin emerge for a pair of Russian spacewalks on August 16th and August 22nd. And between... And how how much would you assess between you and it from the window? The crosshairs are about 0 0.4 degrees to the left of the center of the electronic crosshairs, and the crosshairs are aligned. Copy. 
The range rate is 0 decimal 12 to 0 decimal 14. That's good. The progress has slowed to uh, the proper docking rate of about one tenth of a meter per second. Standing by for contact and capture. Don't shine the flashlight in his eyes. Yeah, no, but I need some light here so I could see the target. And uh, the crosshairs are aligned. Losing image again. Okay, Flasher, you don't need to worry about TV now. Yeah. Please don't touch anything on it. No, no. I'm keeping my hands away from it. And I'm watching the probe entering the cone about uh, half a meter left. Target is at the center. Uh, no angular shift. 20 uh, millimeters. The uh, probe is inside the cone. Everything's good. Standing by for a contact. Contact confirmed. Yeah, and we see that. Uh, Docking confirmed. Contact and capture at 9.26 p.m. Central Time. Progress 52 completes its fast track to the International Space Station. Docking uh, to the complex over the uh, Pacific Ocean, approaching uh, the west coast of South America. Uh, it's all good. Thank you. Uh, we got a little warm here from worrying so much. Can we stop recording on end viewer? Wait, uh, let's wait for the hard made to uh, be done. But we're not seeing any image past the crosshairs, so I don't know how valuable that would be. Moscow Station on Space Ground 1. The uh, docking occurring right at the uh, split second it was planned to after a flawless uh, five hour, 45 minute uh, venture from the launch pad at the uh, Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan uh, to the International Space Station. Docking occurring at 9.26 p.m. Central Time. What did he say? Over the uh, South Pacific as uh, the International Space Station and the Progress 52 cargo craft approached uh, the west coast of South America. The relative motion of the two vehicles now beginning to dampen out a bit. Uh, this will enable the uh, forward docking probe on the Progress to begin to retract and initiate the closing of hooks to form a hard mate between the two vehicles. I understand what you're saying. Guys, you go to uh, stop recording. TV record. Copy. In work. Stopping. As far as the downlinks, there will be some recommendations later. Uh, we're still discussing whether there's going to be any value to it or not. I guess for memory's sake, for historical value, yeah, I guess at most. Nicola, I guess we're acting for page 27 on MCC Go, and uh, we're standing by for that Go. Okay, copy. So as we stand by uh, for the uh, docking probe to retract and the hooks to close to form a hard mate, uh, once again, to recap, uh, the Progress 52 cargo ship launched on time at 3.45 p.m. Central Time, 2.45 a.m. Baikonur time at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on Sunday morning. The uh, launch uh, occurring uh, on the dot, 
sending uh, the Soyuz booster and the Progress resupply ship on an almost nine minute journey to uh, deliver the Progress to its preliminary orbit. All of its uh, navigational antennas and its solar arrays deployed uh, as planned and the Progress executed a flawless uh, five and a half hour rendezvous over four orbits uh, to reach uh, the International Space Station for an on-time docking at 9.26 p.m. Central Time over the South uh, Pacific, uh, just off the west coast of South America. The Progress is delivering to the station 1,212 pounds of propellant, 42 pounds of oxygen, 62 pounds of air, 926 pounds of water, and 3,395 pounds of maintenance equipment, resupply items, life support system items, and experiment hardware, and a few tools uh, and spare parts uh, for possible use uh, for repair work on the U.S. spacesuits, particularly on Luca Parmitano's spacesuit uh, that incurred a water intrusion into Parmitano's helmet during the last spacewalk that he and Chris Cassidy conducted back on July 16th that resulted in an early termination of that excursion outside of the Quest airlock. Station Moscow. Australia. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, welcome to Greek Hill. The hooks are closed. Bring it up. Copy. Bring it up. ISS Moscow, space to ground one for Alexander. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nikolai. You can uh, reinstate the nominal COM configuration. I copy. In work, Nikolai. And the visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control now reports that the hooks are closed, so we have a hard mate now between the newly arrived Progress 52 cargo ship and the pier's docking compartment that will be the home for this resupply vehicle until at least the end of this year. Alexander, what's good? Alexander, space to ground one for Moscow. Regarding come. Go ahead, Nikolai. Sasha, let's not uh, rush things. First we'll deactivate tour, and then we'll uh, figure out the situation with the uh, reconfig to the nominal car. Yeah. Actually, it was uh, busy with the MPEG viewer, inaudible. What, what are you saying for MPEG viewer? You can downlink inaudible. Whatever you've recorded, just put it on OCA, obviously. All right, all files on OCA. Copy. We'll go. Yeah, so we'll get to the uh, com reconfig as soon as we're done with the tour deactivation. Okay, Nicola. We're ready to proceed down page 27, 27. Okay, Fyodor, copy. Okay, standing by. Uh, 
Николай, а мы идем к отключению символа? This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, all's well that ends well as uh, the 52 Progress resupply ship loaded with almost three tons of food, fuel, and supplies for the Expedition 36 crew on the International Space Station uh, glided uh, to a smooth and uneventful docking to the pier's docking compartment at 9.26 p.m. Central Time, completing uh, a trek of about five hours and 45 minutes from uh, the launch pad of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan Launch occurring at 3.45 p.m. Central Time on Saturday, 2.45 a.m. Baikonur Time on Sunday morning. All of uh, the appendages, uh, the navigational antennas, the forward docking probe, the solar arrays on uh, the Progress 52 deployed uh, as had been planned, and the Progress executed a series of uh, on-time rendezvous burns uh, to close the gap between itself and the International Space Station with the expedited uh, four-orbit uh, six-hour uh, docking uh, profile that has been used recently not only for Progress vehicles but also for manned Soyuz vehicles uh, to occur on time with the link-up occurring uh, over the South Pacific near the west coast of South America at 9.26 p.m. Central Time. Within a few minutes, uh, hooks closed on both sides of the docking interface after the forward docking probe retracted to form a hard mate. Uh, tomorrow, uh, the crew on Sunday, the um, crew members will conduct leak checks uh, between uh, the uh, docking interface uh, between the Progress and the pier's docking compartment before opening up the hatch to the Progress resupply vehicle on Sunday and to begin to unload uh, its cache of cargo including some uh, spacewalking repair tools that were expedited uh, to Moscow and then flown down to Baikonur this past week uh, for possible use uh, to continue troubleshooting and repair any identifiable problems with Luca Parmitano's spacesuit in the days and weeks to come. So with that, uh, the crew wraps up a, a very busy and uh, very successful day with the arrival of a new cargo ship, the Progress 52, having glided into its uh, docking port at the pier's docking compartment at 9.26 p.m. Central Time uh, after a flawless uh, rendezvous from its launch pad of the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. So that'll wrap it up uh, for this evening. Uh, we'll close with a couple of programming notes. Uh, you can follow all of the activities aboard the International Space Station uh, on our Space Station Live program. Uh, the Space Station Live program airs on NASA television next on Monday, July 29th at 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. That will bring you up to date on all of the rest of the weekend's activities and all of the work uh, to be conducted on Monday by the six crew members on board the International Space Station. As always, you can follow all of the activities every day aboard the Orbital Laboratory on our website at www.nasa.gov station. So with that, we'll call it an evening. The Progress 52 resupply ship safely pulls into port at the International Space Station. For now, that'll wrap it up. Have a good weekend. This is Mission Control Houston.